Welcome to the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Incorporated YouTube channel. The Lord has brought us safe uh, into the year of 2021, and I am so glad about it. Uh, let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the gift of life in this year, and we praise you for the wonderful work that you did to bring us uh, safe this far. Your mercies, grace, forgiveness, protection, and provisions were all life-sustaining to us throughout our journey of 2020. Uh, and we thank you for all that you did for us, and we anticipate that you will continue to walk with us. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, today we're going to talk about don't get stuck in life's passageway. Hopefully this subject will be very thought-provoking to you. Don't get stuck in life's passageway as you, uh, as we are in the beginning of a new year. We can be stuck between last year and this year. Our subject uh, is, once again, don't get stuck in life's passageway. Our text is Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. Joshua chapter 1, verse 1 and 2, and it reads, Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give them, even to the children of Israel. Uh, again, uh, our subject is don't get stuck in life's passageway. Now, life is much like a mansion. Many of us spend our lives in the hallways, uh, stuck between the big room of a regrettable yesterday and, that we cannot get free of and the fantasy of the large room of tomorrow that we have a great desire to reach but our unwillingness to accept God's marching orders doth hinder us. This morning, while I was meditating on uh, Genesis chapter 2, verse 16 and 17, that says, uh, And the Lord God commanded man, saying, Of all the, the trees of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat thereof. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. And Satan did his usual, came along and convinced uh, Adam and Eve that God was trying to keep something from them, that he was trying to cramp their style. And he convinced them to do what God had told them not to do. And that's the way it is in life today even. God says, go on into 2021. I have given it to you. And too often, we are hesitant. God said uh, uh, one thing, and Satan uh, suggested the opposite. And we know the story. Adam and Eve did the opposite. And in life, uh, too often, we are too unwilling to obey God and too willing to go along with Satan and to our detriment. When we're honest, we must admit that many of the people that we know are going or seem to be going nowhere. Israel is just off what should have been only a three-day trip that turned into wandering in the wilderness for 40 years. People will make small trips that, that's not too far from where they are accustomed to being just far enough to always have the past in clear view. Too often we are stuck somewhere between yesterday day that enslaves us and the fantasy of tomorrow unto which we cannot uh, grab hold to. Life is just like that. And too many of us are frozen between potential experiences that call out to us and the memories that enslave us. After the death of Moses, God said bluntly to Joshua, 
Moses, my servant, is dead. Stand up and lead Israel forward. Lead my people, lead this people forward. Perhaps the most obvious difference between emotional and mental and spiritual maturity or the lack of it is the ability or inability to live in a world where a thousand uh, escape um, mechanisms beckons to us. God strongly pressed Joshua into reality. Moses is dead, God says to Joshua. Life goes on. Stand up and go forward. God gives us tears to weep about the past, about, about those that have gone on, but he doesn't give us tears to weep forever. He allows our hearts to be broken, but not indefinitely. There's, there's almost a sternness in the text as God says to his servant, life goes on. Face reality. Face the future. It would be wonderful if our current president could hear God saying to him, life goes on. Face reality. You lost, now move on. God is telling us with a stern voice, life goes on. Face reality and go into and, and take uh, possession of 2021. Yesterday has passed and we are still alive. Get on with your future. One of my favorite movies is titled Groundhog Day. And perhaps that's because uh, my birthday is on Groundhog Day, February 2nd. In the movie, a weatherman is reluctantly sent to cover a story about a weather forecasting rat. That's what he called it, a rat. Now, this is his fourth year on the story, and he makes no effort to hide his frustration. God sees our sorrows, and you and I can uh, be stuck where we are, or we can choose to go on with life. If we go forward, there will be challenges that will strengthen us. And if we go forward also, there will be opportunities to, to be blessed and to be a blessing to others. Go forward and show others the path to take, to go through what you're going through. Show others how to go through this season that you are in in your life. Now, in the movie, upon awaking the following day, the weatherman discovers that it's Groundhog Day again and again and again and again. It's like he's stuck on Groundhog Day. And, 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 and our goal after this message is not to get stuck in life's passageway. Now, first... He uses this to his advantage. And then he comes to the realization that he's doomed to spend the rest of eternity in the same place, seeing the same people doing the same thing every day. The first word of the book of Joshua uh, is a conjunction, now. And it's translated, uh, it, it, it it, it says that, uh, or it shows us that the, this book of Joshua picks up where the book of Deuteronomy ended. And God is telling Joshua, go forward. Now, the term servant was used to designate even the highest officials of a king. Only at the end of his life, Joshua, uh, was he honored with the title servant of the Lord. The nation had mourned Moses' death for 30 days, as stated in Deuteronomy chapter 34, verse 8. 
But now God has instructed Joshua to prepare to enter the new land. The death of any of his servants never frustrates the limits God or limits God, though this causes him sorrow. The death of a saint is uh, is 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 uh, da, 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 what, what is it? Uh, Psalms uh, one sixteen verse fifteen. Uh, the death of a saint are precious in the eyes of the Lord. Yes, that's it. But Joshua's patience stayed. He patiently stayed with Moses and did his job, knowing that one day he and Caleb uh, would get their promised inheritance. Leaders must know not only how to win victories, but also how to accept defeat. God had promised all the land that Israel would trod upon or tread upon under their feet. He had promised them that land. Now, Israel, the Israelites were now to claim this land as their own by taking possession of it. How do they take possession of the land? How do we take possession of our future? Well, you have to come back next week for further instructions. In the meantime, don't get stuck in life's passageway. And there is a place that's referred to as Hades in the Jewish apocalyptic literature. Hades was an intermediate place where all the souls of the dead awaited judgment. Now, not that I uh, look at that as any truth or being factual, but to know that in death, we don't have to worry about being stuck in a passageway because in my Reverend R.L. Leak's voice, Jesus turned the grave into a thoroughfare. He died and they buried him. And during those three days, he went to hell and preached the gospel. And in three days, he rose from the dead with all power or control in his hand. Power to tear down the walls of partition that separated us from God. And I still believe he has the power to tear down racial barriers, economic ceilings in his own time. So our determination should be not to get stuck in life's passageway, but to continue going forward. Uh, and with that, I'm finished and, and let's pray and I'm out of here. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for your living word and for making it come alive in us. Thank you for the understanding that your Holy Spirit gives us. Uh, and now we ask that you would give the increase and keep us from getting stuck in life's passageway. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Don't get stuck outside without your mask. Uh outside of your house, uh, household, house that you live in, and practice social distancing, and wash your hands often. And that alone gives us hope, something so simple, that what we're going through now will pass, and we don't have to lose hope thinking that we are stuck in this pandemic. We are on our way out of it. And too often we give up when the, 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 when the other side might be just three steps away, might be just on the other side of the wall, but we gotta keep going. So, Thank you for joining us again. I pray that your time has been uh, spent wisely. I uh, love you, and I thank God for each and every one of you. Uh, may God bless you real, real, real good in the year of 2021. Take care. 
Stay safe. Bye-bye.